Color management is the least exciting part of working with digital images. But in this day and age of high dynamic range movie projectors and TV sets, it's important to make sure you get it straight. So this time, Stickman straightens out color management. So why is color management such a problem? Well, let's take a look at the most basic problem, contrast. For a variety of reasons, digital images are stored with different contrast. Just take a look at these. The same image stored in different formats. Sometimes this is for efficiency of compression. Sometimes it's a legacy of old school over the air broadcast standards. And sometimes it's because Kyle forgot to set the camera to the right setting. Whatever the reason, here's the problem. How do you know which contrast is the right one? You could eyeball it, but what if the contrast on your TV or monitor is off? And what if you're combining several images with different contrast curves? DPX log file here, a PNG image there. You'll be color correcting all day long just to get all your images looking like they belong together. Starting to see the problem? Wouldn't it be nice if there was one fixed contrast standard for all the images you're working with? Well, good news there is. It's called linear space. Now in the real world, if you double the power to say a light bulb, it gets twice as bright if we conveniently ignore the energy inefficiently burned off as heat. So going from 30 watts to 60 watts should double the brightness of the bulb. Now linear space does the same thing with pixels. If a picture of that light doubles in brightness, the numerical values of its pixels should double as well. In other words, there is a linear change in contrast as brightness increases. So what we want is for all of our images to be encoded with this same linear contrast. Then we have an even playing field. And that's the job of color management. Rather than go through the millions of ways color management can go wrong, we're going to focus on how to do it right. First up, the input LUT. If your source images were captured or encoded correctly, there should be some metadata indicating what kind of contrast curve was applied to the image. For example, this ProRes file was recorded on a Blackmagic camera using the Blackmagic Cinema 4K LUT. Be careful, by the way, as manufacturers release new cameras, they often update their LUTs with subtle differences in the name. You need to make sure you pick the LUT that was used when the footage was recorded. That same file would look like this if it was encoded with the logarithmic Cineon LUT, typically used with DPX files. What we want to do is convert files coming into our NLE, Compositor, or Color Correction app into linear space, that even playing field we've been talking about. This will vary from app to app, but let's look at how DaVinci Resolve does it as an example. First, we tell Resolve to use a linear color management system. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences have created ACES, the Academy Color Encoding System, to help with this. Now we can simply remove the contrast bias in a given image by telling Resolve what kind of LUT was used to create it. Resolve removes the bias, and now the image's contrast is adjusted to our nice, neutral, linear color space. Now, unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. The image may actually look worse after you've done this. That's because your monitor has its own built-in contrast bias. So, depending on your monitor's settings, the contrast of an image could look completely different to the way it was intended to look. Solution is to apply a display LUT to the linear image on its way to your viewer to compensate for the contrast bias of the display. Now, if you're viewing on a computer monitor, that's almost always an sRGB LUT. If it's a standard broadcast monitor, it'll most likely be Rec. 709. And if it's an HDR monitor, could be Rec. 2020 or any number of proprietary LUTs. We'll leave it up to you to figure that out. So here's the story so far. You import your images, have your editing software remove the appropriate LUT, and then all your files are in linear space, an even playing field. Then you edit, composite, color correct to your heart's content, with your viewer LUT making things look right to your viewer. And finally, you send things back out to whatever color space a client wants. Or if you're just going to the web, 
use sRGB and record it as an MP4. The nice thing about ACES is that it uses a huge color space to do all the conversions back and forth, so there's little chance of losing any color detail that your audience is going to be able to see. The color is only as good as what you start with, but ACES helps to preserve all the information as you work with the images. So there you have it, a straight up look at color management. Until next time, be good to your sticks, no matter what shape they're in. Bye.